Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. As you guys can see up on the screen today, we're talking about another one of these Reddit kind of crowdsource power rankings um, that have been going pretty well on Reddit recently. Uh, you see this one has like 76 upvotes. This was from a couple of days ago. Um, these rankings are actually from after the quarterfinals of the LCS lock-in tournament, but this is before the semifinals. Um, so this is, uh, this is Reddit kind of getting their chance to do like an updated rankings because they had a preseason power rankings. Um, and though, even though the lock-in tournament is still like preseason, I guess this would still be kind of a preseason and power ranking in a way um at least we've seen some more game from a lot of these teams and now reddit is kind of giving their updated thoughts and opinions which we're going to be running through and then you know we're going to be roasting we're going to be judging we're going to be agreeing with all that good stuff i'll be giving my thoughts and opinions on every single team all the different rankings hopefully we'll be getting uh you know feedback from you guys as well um these videos have done pretty well so far i think they're pretty fun to go over and just kind of see if we think reddit's smart if we think they're dumb or just kind of what uh everybody's feeling because again reddit is one of the biggest uh communities in the league of legends sphere so uh it's an easy way to get a big big gauge of just what the lol esports kind of community is feeling uh so yeah i think it's pretty cool pretty fun to go through but before we get into that i should mention real quick if you're not already subscribed definitely click that subscribe button really quick you guys know the deal we're trying to run those numbers up i think we recently passed 6200 and yesterday we had a massive day of subscribers we're just kind of exploding right now we're pushing closer and closer to 6300 like way faster than you hit 6200 so this would be awesome you know uh definitely help out do your part also drop a like on this video uh if you guys enjoy my content one helps support my channel anything like that it helps out so 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 much with the youtube algorithm i would appreciate it a ton with that being said uh let's get right in this let's see what reddit's got to say uh, again uh same thing as usual uh these power rankings it's like uh you click on the thing you click lcs and then it just shows you two teams it'll show you tsm and cloud nine then you just click which one uh you think would win in that hypothetical matchup they show you like five six seven eight games i'm not really sure exactly how many um and then uh based on how you kind of just you how you decide who would beat who it kind of sets up your power rankings and it adds it in with everybody else's and they slowly start listing everybody um from 10 to 1 and they also give a number that gives like like their relative strength as well um so it's pretty interesting to look at so uh here we go so we're starting off at the bottom we're gonna go 10 to 1 uh see who read it right now thinks is the worst team in the lcs uh they have immortals at number 10 now to me uh this isn't really fair uh i i disagree here for sure i do not think immortals is going to be the worst team in the league um obviously they looked uh probably the worst in the lock-in tournament they were playing an academy roster i mean they played zero games of their full entire entire roster um and this is just a little bit weird to me i think once they get everybody here um i think insanity is actually a decent mid laner i don't think he's like top five or anything but i don't think he's like the worst um i also think xerxes should be a really really solid jungler in north america um i'm not super high on revenge i definitely have questions about raise and destiny um but i think they have enough pieces to make maybe not be the worst team in the league. Um, I definitely think they're towards the bottom. So I'm not like, I don't think this is like an egregious ranking or egregious placement or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have Immortals worst. I just think this is kind of an overreaction from the lock-in tournament and uh, watching their academy roster play. Uh, but yeah, Immortals at number 10. Uh, at number nine, we have CLG. This is another one that I don't really agree with. But again, CLG, they never had their full roster. Um, you know, Solo was playing a lot of games for them in the lock-in tournament. Uh, Wiggly was playing a lot of games for them them as well uh and you know they're just not that good solo was decent and he was solid last year and he was a decent replacement um wiggly griffin whatever you want to call him uh is a guy that i know a lot of people love to meme on and love to hate and just don't think he's very good i mean if you watch him he just isn't really that good so so knowing that they have finn coming in who uh you know some people don't think is an upgrade over solo but i definitely do i think he should be an upgrade over solo um and then broxa as well who broxa yes is coming off a bad year coming off a bad uh just run stint whatever you want to call it team liquid where his uh value has dropped significantly he still should be better than Griffin. So I think once his full team comes together, once they have some time to play together, uh, they should be all right. Poe Belter doesn't look great to start the season. And man, CLG's bot lane also looking pretty rough. I expected uh, Wild Turtle to come over and be a significant improvement over Stixay. But so far, he's not looking so great. Uh, I think maybe Smoothie might be the problem. But also, just as a lot of people were kind of telling me headed into the season, Wild Turtle was kind of the weak link of FlyQuest last season. So uh, maybe he's just a little bit overhyped, a little bit overrated. CLG has a lot of issues, but again, are they the ninth worst team or are they the ninth best team in the league? Uh, I don't know. I, th I think I would bump them up a little bit, but again, I think they're in this lower half. I, I don't think this is too terrible of a ranking, uh, but so far I don't agree with either ranking from 
Reddit. Uh, at number eight, we have Dignitas. Now, uh, Dignitas, you know, they were a little bit surprising. They actually won. Uh, they won a game in the lock-in tournament, maybe. Um, they started off kind of strong. Uh, Soli Go and Fate God had good games at the beginning, but as the tournament went on, they kind of tapered off. Soli Go and Fate God looked really weak, and to me, Dignitas has some of the weakest, if not the weakest pair of solo laners in the entire LCS, uh, and to me, that's a recipe for disaster. Um, as far as our young talent, Soli Go, Fate God, Neo, I don't really love any of them right now or in the future, and then as far as their veterans, Dardock and Aphromoo, same story there. I really don't like either one of them. Uh, I think they made some plays, but they also inted a little bit as well, and it was just kind of weird. Um, and I'm not really too excited for those guys going forward as well. So right now, I honestly would probably have Dignitas as number 10 for me personally headed into the lock-in or headed into the, the, the start of the legit LCS season. Uh, but, you know, you can look at the numbers on the right side. People had Dignitas and CLG pretty close. So these are, teams were pretty interchangeable um, in the, the collective hive mind of Reddit. Um, so I guess it's not too bad. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I would bump Dignitas down a little bit uh, in my rankings headed into the season. At number seven, we have Golden Guardians. Now, this one, uh, again, I'm not sure if I exactly agree with it. I, I think Golden Guardians, uh, you coming into the season, they were pretty unanimously, unanimously, I can't even talk, 10th on most people's power rankings that I saw. Some people had Dignitas 10th, but a lot of people had Golden Guardians. Um, and this team surprised a lot of people um, during the lock-in tournament. I had no clue what to expect from Niles or Iconic. Like, I didn't know what to expect from Niles. I knew even less about Iconic, um, you know, skipping over the Academy scene entirely, getting into the LCS. Um, but so far, Iconic has looked like kind of like a beast, uh, and Niles has shown some flashes of greatness as well, but he's still kind of made some solo queue-esque, you know, rookie young player mistakes, where if he can clean that stuff up, he's got a bright future ahead of him, but I don't know if he's just ready yet to start popping off. Um, Stixa has looked a little bit better than he did last season, which is awesome. I haven't been too impressed with Newbie so far, um, and a Blaze Olive hasn't looked great either but you know he's been battling like some kidney stones and medical issues and who knows how much he's been able to practice or even sleep or anything like that uh we heard he was like throwing up and stuff that was just crazy um but yeah golden guardians pretty exciting interesting team even though uh, i still don't think they're the most talented i don't know how many wins are going to be able to pick up during the season they at least play a fun exciting style which has people excited about them and has people pretty impressed to start the season and i think that's why people have them at seventh uh i had them 10th in the preseason i would definitely have them like seventh or eighth now um so i do like that you know reddit's giving them some credit starting to move them up uh and that's exciting at number six we have FlyQuest. This is a hard team for me to rate. Coming into the season, people had them all over the place. People had them third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Uh, their team is super, super young, super inexperienced with a ton of question marks. Uh, and in the first week, they looked absolutely terrible. Um, but then, obviously, in the second week with Jose Diodo coming in, they started to look a little bit better. They picked up a big win against Evil Geniuses. But Evil Geniuses already had the number one seed locked up. They didn't really have much to play for at that point. Uh, and then FlyQuest went on uh, to beat uh, Immortals Academy team. And then they got 2 0 by Liquid in the knockout stage. So, yes, they did get one big win against Evil, against Evil Geniuses. But in pretty much every other game, they did not look great. So... I don't know how ready I am to say, you know, that Jose Diodo's saving the team or turning the team around or whatever. I think FlyQuest is a team that should continue to ramp up over the course of the season as all their players get more experience, as all their players uh, get more accustomed to just being LCS caliber players and everything. Uh, and they, they should be really good. But so far to start the season, a lot of worrying things for this team. Uh, Diamond, I think, has looked absolutely terrible. Licorice has been one of the worst top laners in the league. Like, man, people are giving Hooney a ton of crap. Licorice has maybe even been worse than Hooney to start the season, and that's not good. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Again, all the problems with Diamond is kind of weighing down Johnson a little bit. Palafox has been a little bit hit or miss. When he gets his Akali, he's been pretty solid. Um, and then Jose Diodo, he's still obviously getting his footing under and under him, trying to grow with the team and stuff. FlyQuest, really, really interesting team. Hard team for me to place right now, um, but it seems like a lot of the preseason hype is definitely dying down a little bit. But they still have them top six, still like a playoff team in the spring. That's not too bad. Uh, next up at number five, TSM. So this is a big drop for them when obviously in the preseason, uh, I think the, the most often ranking we saw was number three for TSM, but man, did they look terrible so far during the lock-in tournament, and to, except at the very end. In their series against Cloud9, obviously they did pick up a win, which was pretty big because people have Cloud9 really, really highly rated. And even though Cloud9 maybe hasn't lived up to a lot of expectations so far, still TSM being able to take a game off them um, is good. Now, I think so far Sword Art has been pretty solid. Speak has been good. Huni has really been pretty disappointing so far. But man, Lost has honestly been one of the worst players in the LCS so far to start the season. Yes, it is just preseason, so it doesn't really mean that much yet. But if that continues into the regular season, that is going to be a huge issue for TSM. Uh, just, I mean, you really cannot have a player playing at this level. And I mean, if you look at his stats, uh, he's really 
the eye test i'm watching but also the stats are not lying either that he is performing as one of the worst players in the lcs right now and that is very very concerning because when you're playing on a team that's solid you know tsm hasn't been good to start the season but they haven't been terrible either your stats really should trend up a little bit like they have like a they had like a 43 percent win rate they're not losing a ton of games or kda shouldn't be swamped or anything um and i mean loss is just not cutting it so that is really really worrying for me i hope he can pick things up as we go um but again he's not one of these like 18 19 year old he's 21 years old um he should i feel like be a little bit better than this at this point but we'll see how that goes um but yeah people were not happy with what they saw from psm they looked very passive they looked very all the question marks people had about them coming into the season really came true uh and that's why they're dropping them down uh, to number five, obviously. But, you know, the best team that didn't make the, the top four. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, it's going to be an interesting run for TSM. They're going to be a highly scrutinized team the whole season. Uh, but, yeah, number five for them, quite a fall. At number four, uh, you guys don't see anything there. Uh, at number four, we have uh, one of the teams making the, the biggest rise so far, which is Evil Geniuses. This is a team that some people had six or seventh before the preseason, uh, and they popped off uh, in the group stage. You know, they went three and one. They uh, were atop their group in a group with FlyQuest and Cloud9 that people really kind of had rated above them coming into the season. Uh, and yes, they did drop uh, that game to uh, FlyQuest, which wasn't the best, but then a 2-0 in the knockout stage. Uh, and things are looking good. Uh, Impact has been one of the best players in the league to start the season. That's awesome to see. Definitely has been way better than I thought he would be, but we'll see how long they can keep that up. Ignar has been a beast. Their bot lane's been awesome. And Jazuke is kind of playing that old Jazuke style. He's getting the champions he likes. Uh, he's getting good drafts and his team's playing around him and he's getting to play that crazy aggressive carry style um, with all his traditional picks. So, I mean, so far so good. Everything's looking good for Evil Geniuses. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised to see them this low at number four. I would probably have them a little bit higher, uh, but we'll find out a lot about this team uh, this weekend during the semifinals. All teams in the top four, we're going to find out a ton about them uh, in these semifinal games because they should really be bangers because these top four teams, in my opinion, are pretty, pretty close. Uh, at number three, you guys can already see it a little bit. It kind of got leaked, but we got 100 Thieves and uh, yeah, same story with them. This is a team that was very, very hyped up coming into the season, and they've looked good. They beat Team Liquid in the group stage. Yes, it was with Grig in the jungle, but hey, a win's a win. You can only play who they put you up against. They absolutely smashed TSM, uh, and they've looked good so far. They look good in the knockout stage as well. Um, obviously, that old Golden Guardians team keeping that synergy together and throwing someday in the top lane adds a lot of awesome, exciting players and a lot of things to go right. Uh, the big question marks about this team are just kind of uh, how good is who he going to be as a support, and so far, that's been pretty good. FBI's been a beast, and then Demonte is kind of the big question mark in the mid lane but man he is an awesome kind of facilitator help setting up all the huge carries and playmakers on this team so it's really gelling uh really really well and, and again this is going to be a big series for them this weekend it's going to really prove um what's going on but now at number two we see that reddit uh, is kind of predicting Cloud9 in the semifinals. So uh, this was one of the comments on the Reddit there. It was like, damn, I'm surprised that people are hating on TSM so much and not hating on Cloud9 more. And again, I agree with the TSM at number five. I think they deserve all the hate they've gotten and stuff so far. But Cloud9 to be getting this much love, it's just a little bit weird to me. Evil Geniuses and 100 Thieves have both looked very, very good. And Cloud9 has looked a little bit shaky. Yeah, they came back and finished this, uh, the series with TSM pretty strong. But man, all the other games before that and dropping a game to TSM, I can't really justify putting them number two right now. Now, if they come out this weekend and they just blow through everybody, you know, if they have like a 3-0 against 100 Thieves or something crazy like that, or even a 3-1, I mean, yeah, they're the second best team. And on paper, they're maybe the second most talented team in the league, but they have not been playing as the second best team in the league right now. And I think it's a little bit crazy, but it really just shows um, how strong the Cloud9 fan base is. That's just something where they've historically always been super, super strong, but also obviously getting guys like Perks is going to raise their fan base up even more. So even to the point where, you know, Cloud9 is not playing super great right now but uh the fans are still backing them fans are still loving them uh but yeah they're uh, the i mean it seems like reddit is expecting cloud nine to make it to the finals that was not my pick but again i wouldn't be shocked because this team is so so talented it's, if they can ever just figure it out and get on the same page and turn it on they can be very very scary blabbers looked insane to start the season sven and vulcan are looking awesome fudge has not been looking so awesome and perks has just been left a little bit to be desired but if uh if fudge and perks can turn it on this team's going to be scary, but it hasn't happened yet. So I don't know about rating them number two just yet. You know, let them prove it to us. Let, them, let us, uh, let them, you know, kind of show out first and then I'll move them up, but I'm not moving them up yet. 
Finally, at number one, no surprise here, Team Liquid. This, uh, in my opinion, is the just the best team in the LCS. I, they might have the single best player at every single position. Yes, obviously, there's a case to be made for Perks over Jensen, but so far to start the season, I think Jensen honestly might have been better. Um, but for sure, at the other positions, Alfari, one of the best top laners, if not the best. Santorin might be the best jungler. Blabber is in that conversation. Closer's even been pretty solid to start the season. Um, but I think Sven and Vulcan are both insane. Uh, I, what am I saying? Not Sven and Vulcan. Tactical and Core JJ um, have both been insane as well. Uh, and then, yeah, Jensen uh, has not been amazing, but mid lane's been kind of weird to start the season. Uh, I think Team Liquid's absolutely stacked. I think they're NA's best hope at MSI, at Worlds, and everything this year. Um, and especially right now, it looks like they're really clicking on all cylinders. Especially, Santorin's only had a little bit of time to kind of scrim and practice himself with the team. So the more weeks they get under their belt, I expect this team to just keep ramping up, keep getting better. Alfari, Man, he uh, is looking like uh, just an insane import. One of the best import signings in a while. He has just been so, so exciting and so fun to watch to start the season. Uh, I mean, the the CSD farmer. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I've never really been a huge fan of Team Liquid, but I'm all about this team right now. Uh, and I'm hoping they can keep things up. And I'm hoping they can hopefully elevate the play um, across the board in the LCS by kind of, you know, be an example for everyone to keep up with. Uh, but I definitely do expect them to win the lock-in tournament. It seems like Reddit does as well. Reddit's expecting a TL Cloud9 finals. I'm expecting expecting a TL 100 Thieves final, but uh, but yeah, all the teams at the top four are pretty close, pretty interesting, and I'm hoping for some good games this weekend, but that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. This was the Reddit uh, crowdsource power rankings headed in to the semifinals and finals weekend. Definitely drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Helps me out so, so much with the YouTube algorithm, and I'd appreciate it a ton. Leave a comment down below. What do you guys think Reddit got right? What do you think they got wrong? What do your power rankings look like? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on anything we talked about in today's video. Subscribe to stay updated on my latest content. Let's hit 7K as soon as we can, boys. That would be so dope. Hopefully, I catch you guys in the next one, but until then, Peace!